Hey, what's up? Thank you so much for bringing your smiling faces right here to another video. If you're new here, my name's Captain Eric. I'm the owner and operator of Flowbass Fishing Charters down here in Southeast Florida. Now, if you have an older outboard that has seen a lot better days and is definitely showing some signs of age, well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make it go from this to looking something like this without having to take it to a professional to do something you guys can do in the comfort of your own home basically with just hand tools and spray cans you can get like professional results now it's not going to look absolutely perfect but i can get you pretty darn close as you can see right here so without further ado i'm going to show you guys how to basically refresh your outboard and these are the tools that you're going to need to do it before we go over each material that you're going to need to perform this restoration, what I've gone ahead and done is I've included links for everything in the description. These are my Amazon affiliate links. So by using them, you guys are helping support the channel directly. And I've also gone ahead and included each engine manufacturer's color specific paint. So whether you have a Mercury or a Yamaha or maybe a Suzuki or even a Honda, I have links for each specific color in the description to make it easy for you guys so you can do this right at home, no guessing required, no matter what engine manufacturer you guys have. Without further ado, here are the materials that I use to perform this restoration on my outboard. Starting out, you're going to need some sandpaper and make sure it is a wet dry sandpaper. You're going to need 220 grit and then a slightly finer grit of 600. And then for those smaller cracks and crevices and finer contours of your outboard, you're gonna need some steel wool to rough up that paint. I suggest getting both a medium and a fine grade of steel wool. You'll also need some masking tape to mask off areas you do not want to get any paint on. You'll need to get yourself some acetone as well as some towels so you can wipe off all that dirt and debris and get everything nice and clean for paint. Now, whether you're doing this outside or in a garage, you still want to use a respirator Getting these chemicals inside your lungs is not a very good thing. Now, depending on where you'll be doing your painting, you'll also want to purchase some plastic drop cloths to cover anything you do not want over spray on. If you're doing this in a wide open space, this may not apply to you, but like I'm doing in my garage, I have quite a few of these and I've got a lot of things covered to make sure there's no overspray. Now, moving on to the paint, I'll go over exactly how many cans I used at the end of the video, but there's three paints you're going to need. First, a primer, which is going to prep the surface for you. And then, of course, you'll need your manufacturer's color matched paint. And then rounding it up, you'll want to use a very nice, high quality clear coat. And then something that I highly recommend you guys use is this special trigger designed for spray cans. What this is going to do is give you better control over the spray pattern as you're spraying with the can. And it's also going to save your pointer finger because that is going to get worn out from how many coats you're going to have to do. So by using one of these triggers, it's going to reduce fatigue and just help you paint so much better. And then an optional item you may need is a tack cloth, depending on your preferences. What this does is help wipe down the surface and get all the little tiny little bits of dust and debris off of your work surface before you go ahead and apply paint. And depending on how big of a restoration you're going to be doing on your outboard, you'll want to find the appropriate aftermarket decal set as well. Okay, so now let's get started on restoring this outboard. So first you want to determine what exactly you want to paint. Now some people may only need to paint their engine cowls. My outboard is completely trash, so I will be painting the entire thing, but not in this video. Today I'm going to be focusing on just the cowl and the chaps that are just below it. So naturally the first thing is you have to disassemble everything. The cowl obviously is easy to remove. Your chaps will be a little more in depth. And depending on your outboard, you may have a trim switch that you will have to take out and unplug. So be sure to either take pictures or use some tape and wrap them around the wires and mark which ones go to what. Usually your wires are gonna be color coded, so you just plug the same colors into each other. But sometimes these wires can be a little faded and difficult to tell. So the next thing you wanna do is have a nice work area to where you can start prepping before you paint. So the first step of my prep process is to remove all the old decals and emblems from my outboard. And there's only these two left. 
everything was either peeled or faded away before I actually purchased the boat, but I will be replacing my emblems and decals with aftermarket ones. And in order to do this, there's two ways that you can go about doing this. The way I'm showing you here is with a razor blade, and a razor blade works very well. You keep it at a very, very shallow angle in relation to the work surface that you're gonna be scraping the decals off of, and it will lift the decals off very, very easy. You can also use a special rubber wheel that you attach to a drill where you can grind these decals off. That also works very well. That will help remove all the additional adhesive material from these decals that's left over but you can accomplish that with just a razor blade and some acetone as well, and maybe a little bit of light sanding depending on how much of that adhesive is still there. Next, you wanna remove any of the latches that are on your cowling as well that help secure it to your outboard. And then with those removed, you'll wanna paint those at the same time you're doing all your additional steps in the painting process. Depending on your engine manufacturer, you may have different covers that are bolted to your cowling. It is a good idea to go ahead and remove those while you're not going to see the paint under these after everything's reassembled. It's a very wise idea to go ahead and remove these and paint under these surfaces. That's just gonna help your overall paint job last a lot longer. So with everything disassembled, now you can go ahead and make an assessment of how far you're going to have to sand down whatever paint is left over on your outboard. So in my case, the clear coat is completely oxidized except for the areas where the old decals are. You can still see the paint is a little shiny in those areas. Now we can go ahead and begin sanding. Now the first sandpaper you're going to want to use is the 220 grit. What this is going to do is rough up the paint and help your primer adhere better to your work surface. And this 220 will also remove any extra sticker residue that may be left over if you had to remove those decals. A little pro tip is if you have any type of sponge or foam is to wrap your sandpaper around that. What that's going to do is help you apply firm but even pressure on the work surface as you are sanding it. Now it's very important to avoid sanding any corners or edges. These are going to get sanded whether you like it or not, but definitely avoid them. Do not apply direct pressure to them because those areas will have the thinnest amount of paint on them and it's very easy to burn right through the paint all the way down to the fiberglass. So don't sand them. They are going to get sanded anyway. After you fully sanded down the paint, take some acetone and a rag and rub everything down and get all of the dust off of your work surface because we are going to lay our first coat of primer. Because the more layers of paint that you add, the more those little imperfections are going to show up. So it's better to take care of every little imperfection as early on in the process as possible because as you start laying more coats of paint, and then move on to the actual color phase and clear coat, it gets more and more difficult to correct any mistakes. As you can see in this clip, there was still some residue left over from my decals. So I went ahead and scraped more away of it with my razor blade and went ahead and sanded those spots down even more to get all of that residue off. Now, if your outboard has some more harder to reach and contoured areas, this is where your steel wool is gonna come into play. Now again, you're not gonna be able to see this area once the cowling is reassembled, but having a good, clear, firm, even coat across the entire outboard prevent any peeling or chipping that starts underneath this area and then works its way outward. Now that everything is prepped and cleaned, before we start painting, make sure everything that you do not want overspray on is covered with a drop cloth. Starting with our first coat of primer, you're going to want to make sure that the nozzle of the spray can is level with the surface you are going to be painting. Hold the can 8 to 10 inches away from your work surface and make a sweeping pass. Start your spray off of the work surface and then sweep the spray onto it. And then when you move to the end, stop your spray and then rinse and repeat, making sure that your spray is covering 50% of your first pass as you move down your work surface. And of course, this goes without saying, make sure you are wearing your respirator while doing this. 
Now for this first coat, you do not want to completely wet out the primer. You're going to get runs if you do that. You want full coverage, but not full saturation. I would say somewhere between 50 and 75% saturation. It's perfectly okay if you see a few zebra stripes or a little bit of your original outboard color underneath the primer for this first pass. That's perfectly fine. During the second one, that's when you're going to fully cover everything. Now for my project painting both the cowling and the chaps, for these primer coats, I ended up using two and a half cans to get complete coverage for each coat. Now every paint is different, but for my particular cans, it had a one hour drying time before I would be able to go ahead and start sanding it. So now with the sanding process, you're going to lightly sand with your 220 grit. And what we're gonna do is actually wet sand this. What the wet sanding does is provide a little extra lubrication and it actually gives you a smoother surface once you start to sand. Again, same rules apply. We avoid all the edges. And you can see here, I'm using my foam pad again with the sandpaper. The foam pad helps me apply even light pressure across my surface. And the idea here is to level out the paint surface and just scuff it up just enough so our next coat will have enough adhesion to apply and come out nice and smooth. The more prep we do earlier on in the process will help our other coats come out better and better. And for these harder to reach spots, I revert back to the medium steel wool. With the wet sanding, obviously you get water everywhere. So before you begin laying down your next coats, you wanna make sure everything is completely dry and you get all water away from the work surface. Using the aerosol cans, it can kick up water droplets as you are spraying and you do not want anything to get onto the parts you're painting. So after ensuring all the parts are completely dry with a rag, go ahead and use your acetone and apply a light amount on a rag and then wipe down the surface. This is gonna help pick up all the little dust and debris left over from your sanding. And you just have to do a light pass. Don't push very hard because as you can see here, it does take away some of the paint, especially on those tricky corners where your coats are the lightest. Now we can move on to our second primer coat. Again, the same rules apply. 50% overlapping passes. Don't go too fast. Don't go too slow to where you get runs. And we're looking for the same amount of coverage as we did on our first coat, but with this second, the two combined will provide full and complete coverage. And again, to get this complete coverage, I ended up using two and a half cans for both the cowling and my other parts. You can see in this area, I did start to develop a run. I don't think my sweeps were fast enough, but that's okay. We caught it early enough in the primer process to where we can level this out so it does not show up later in both our color and clear coats. Now to take out this run, I didn't want to remove too much paint. So I first started out with my medium steel wool, but that wasn't removing enough paint. I switched back to the 220 sandpaper, made sure I applied plenty of water for lubrication and lightly sanded it until I could not feel any of the bumps from the run with my bare hand. Moving through the rest of the wet sanding process, I found that the 220 and also the 600 grit was moving a little bit too much paint, especially from the corners. So from this point on, I just stuck to wet sanding with the steel wool. That was able to rough up the paint just enough to where I had perfect adhesion with every coat moving on. 
and then after the wet sanding process I actually omitted using the acetone after this as well. What I ended up doing was using a damp rag to wipe off all the dust and debris and that was perfectly fine. The acetone was removing this primer a little bit too much so I decided not to use it moving forward. Now with your color coats you're going to want about 75% coverage with each coat. You don't want to fully wet them out, but they are going to be very close. But after you're done laying down your color coat, you don't want to see any primer underneath it. Moving on to wet sanding the color coat, what I went ahead and did was I did not use any of the sandpaper. That was turning out to be a little too rough for this, so I stuck to just using the steel wool. On the color coats, it is so important to get these as smooth as possible because you're going to lay down your clear coats over it and it's going to directly affect your final finish. So what I went ahead and did was wet sand first with the medium steel wool to level everything out and then I went ahead and finished with the fine steel wool, making sure that the color coat was perfectly hazy to provide perfect adhesion for my next coat. Checking your work, you know you've done a good job when every square inch is perfectly hazy and when you apply water, it comes out perfectly glossy. Moving forward, the same steps apply. Make sure everything is wiped down perfectly clean so there's no sanding dust or any debris on your work surfaces. And then make sure everything is dry and you can move on to your second coat of paint. Hold the can eight to 10 inches away from the surface. Make 50% overlapping passes. And with this second coat of paint, you're gonna wanna make sure you have complete and full saturation. But again, we are not looking to fully wet out the paint. You're gonna be applying a somewhat heavy coat, but not heavy enough to where the paint begins to run. After you finished your second coat with the paint still wet, you wanna go ahead and use critical light and use a flashlight to look over every inch of the paint. Make sure that there are no hazy spots whatsoever and that is a very deep glossy shine with your color coat. As you can see here in this one spot, I didn't get full coverage and there was a slight hazy spot on this part of the chap. So I went ahead and hit it again while it was still wet with color coat and got it to a point where it was full glossy and completely smooth. With your second and final coat of color finished, you're going to go ahead and do your final prep for clear. Now what we're gonna do is only use our fine nap steel wool and we're gonna wet sand the surfaces down until we have a hazy finish. But with all the prep process we did in all previous steps, this final color coat should not have any bumps, waves, it should be completely smooth so only the fine steel wool is required. The goal here is not to remove material, but to scuff it up so we have good adhesion with our clear coat. With the final wet sanding complete and after you've fully cleaned and dried your work surfaces, what I recommend doing is to take your tack cloth and do a final wipe down of the surfaces before you go ahead and apply your clear coat. The clear coat is going to seal any imperfections up to this point, so you do not want the slightest speck of dust dirt or debris on your work surfaces once you go to apply your clear coat. 
Now, aside from prepping your surfaces after each coat perfectly, the clear coat, in my opinion, is the most important step. The clear coat is gonna determine the final look of your project, and it's also the most important because it protects your paint from all of the elements being outside. I highly recommend do not skimp out on your clear coat. This Spray Max 2K clear coat is some of the best out there in terms of an aerosol spray. And the reason for that is because it has a hardener in it. All these other clear coats that are just a single stage process that you can get at Home Depot, these do not have any hardener in it. They'll wear out much quicker and they just will not stand up to the elements and they will not give you that high gloss finish that the Spray Max 2K can give you. You can see this little button on the bottom of the spray can. This releases the hardener. And once you do this, you have about 48 hours of use of this can once you release the hardener. So it's pretty much a one-time use can. Once you activate it, you essentially want to have everything prepped and ready to go to where you're going to fully apply your clear coats and not have any downtime in between. An interesting part about the Spray Max can is that the nozzle is adjustable. So you can adjust it vertically to have an up and down fan stroke, or you can adjust the nozzle horizontally to give you a left and right fan stroke. This clear coat lays down a lot differently than the primer and the color coats you sprayed. So you're gonna have to experiment and find the correct speed Aside from that, the same painting rules apply. You're gonna hold the can eight to 10 inches from your work surface, make sure the fan is level with your work surface, and you're gonna make 50% overlapping passes just like all the other coats. And what you're looking for when you apply each coat is that it is a full wet coat, there's no runs, and there's no haziness whatsoever. If you see any haziness, that means your pass is going too fast and you need to slow down. And of course, if you see any runs, that means you're going too slow and you need to speed up your spraying. I applied two coats of clear coat to my entire project and I used one can per coat. I waited one hour between coats and I did not wet sand the clear coat whatsoever. As soon as my first clear coat was dry per the manufacturer's recommendations, I went ahead and applied my second coat using the same rules, making sure I didn't get any haziness or runs. And as you can see in this next shot, my results came out fantastic. There was a little bit of haziness, but I'm not too worried about that because that's in the area where my decals are going to go over. So with that being said, it's time to go ahead and reassemble the chaps onto your outboard. Now you can go ahead and reinstall your cowling or you can leave it off as you apply your decals. Personally, I recommend leaving it off. I found this out after the fact that it worked out a lot better for me. But now let's go ahead and go over the decal application. Now we can move on to applying our decals, but before doing so, you wanna wait at least 24 hours for your clear coat to cure so it is fully hard before you go ahead and start applying your decals. First, what I recommend doing is separating your decals and applying them with masking tape to your outboard so you can get a general idea of their position and where they need to fit on your motor. The decal application process is actually quite simple. It's going to be a wet application process. So what I'm doing here is I take my spray bottle and I apply about 10 drops of dish soap into it so it's slightly lubricated. And then if you don't have a vinyl decal applicator, you can just go ahead and use a credit card. I'm using my Costco card here. Once I've determined the general location my decals are going to be applied on the outboard, Go ahead and take that soapy water solution. You're gonna spray both your outboard as well as the sticky side of your vinyl decals. Now don't worry, the soapy water is not going to affect the adhesion process whatsoever. These decals are actually made to do this. And I always err on the side of caution. I apply more water than what's actually necessary 
because as you can see here, I'm having to make a lot of adjustments and having that extra lubrication is just gonna help make maneuvering the decal and peeling it off that much easier. And you most likely will have to reapply the water every few times you take the decal off. You do have to work somewhat fast when doing this. That's why I apply an extra amount of soapy water so it lasts longest because it can take quite a few adjustments to get everything in its final resting place. But don't be afraid to do that because once it's in its final spot, you're gonna squeegee that water out from underneath the decal using your applicator or credit card. So once you're happy with the placement of everything, it's time to go ahead and squeegee the water out. What you wanna do is spray the outside of your decal as well, just to add a little extra lubrication for your card so it doesn't leave too many scratches on your vinyl decal. The process that I like to use is I start at the top of the vinyl decal and push the water down and out at a sideways angle using overlapping strokes very similar to the painting process. And essentially what you want to do is keep squeegeeing out until you see no more soapy water come out from the edges of your decals. You may see a few air pockets left in there. At this point of the process, if you've just squeegeed out the water, you should be able to work out those air pockets, but there may be a few small tiny ones left over, which is perfectly okay. Once you leave this out in the sun, it should remove all those tiny little air pockets. And if you do have any left after a few days, you can take just a tiny little pin and poke a hole and press the air out. All right, well, that's gonna conclude this video. You know, this was a super, super fun project. It essentially took me about a day and a half to complete and I couldn't be happier with the results. Now, there are a few little imperfections, but really it's no sweat off my back. You know, you can't notice the imperfections, you know, from, you know, six feet or farther away. So I'm really happy, you know, there's a little bit of hazing in the clear coat and the decals in the back, they don't exactly, they're not exactly level. But other than that, I'm in love with the results. Um, it's you know gonna give me quite a few years of service. I'm sure I'll be moving up to a different boat by the time this starts to uh, show a little signs of wear. It's gonna get me through quite a few guiding seasons. I'm gonna be looking fresh and uh, not like a jalopy with all the other guide boats out there. So I'm super happy about that. Um, overall, the amount of product I used for each coat on the cowling and the chaps I used two and a half cans for each coat. So I did two coats of primer, two coats of base, and two coats of clear. So for every coat, that was two and a half cans, that got me the most optimal coverage and uh, also built up you know, a good solid amount of layers for this to last you know, as long as I need it to, at least five years, I would say. So I hope this video has given you guys the confidence to tackle this project yourself. Like I said in the beginning of this video, anyone can do it. You can do it in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to take it to a professional. I know that I personally saved about $500 doing this compared to the quotes that I received in my local area. And that's definitely huge. That 500 is going right back into the guide business. We're gonna up, keep upgrading the boat and make it better than ever. So definitely a huge win for sure. And like I said, I had a fun time doing this as well. So save some money, do it yourself, and just follow my tips in this video and you'll be able to get some absolutely amazing results. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Captain Eric, Flow Bass Fishing Charters. I post videos as often as I can. So if you're into the South Florida thing, you know, I do bass, exotics, a little bit of salt water. Take a look at my other videos. I know you'll enjoy them. And with that being said, I'm gonna peace out. So I'll see you in that next video. Peace.